and historical services were set up by the Army to try to publicize and record the Army's participation in the war in whatever theater they were set up in. And the tendency in the states at that time, I think, was to think that the uh, Navy and the Marines were winning the war in the Pacific. And uh, the Army wanted to uh, convince the people back home that the Army was uh, making a great contribution to the war effort, too. So the service was set up partly for that uh, purpose. And the news people and photographers with our group uh, were given the assignment of trying to record the war for the news services, uh, for the newspapers back home, and for the news magazines. And the radio section was to try to publicize it via radio. There was no television in those days, of course. And we had the very primitive wire recorders, which had just been developed. And we carried 70 pounds of batteries on our back just to operate the small wire recorders. And we did two things. We reported the war in an overall way, or tried to, for the Army Hour and other programs on the networks back home, as well as making what we called hometown interviews. We would find a, a soldier who had done something memorable from, say, Minneapolis and make a recording of it, an interview with him, and send it to the stations in Minneapolis, hoping they would use it. Uh, the Army Hour was produced by the Army and NBC every Sunday afternoon. And we might have reports from Europe and from uh, all of the other uh, theaters of operations. And it was my job to furnish them in the later stages of the Philippines campaign on Samar and Leyte, and later from Okinawa. And I believe the one you have is uh, one that was made by the uh, engineers here at KFYR Radio when they heard me come on. They quickly recorded it on one of the old glass-based acetate discs. And those discs are not very good quality. And uh, this one happened to have a break in it because it was glass. And the uh, transmissions were made, the wire recordings were made on Okinawa. And I would give them to a pilot who was going back to Guam where the Navy transmitter was. The Navy had the big powerful transmitter on Guam and the area sensor was in Guam. And the area sensor had to check all of those uh, recordings before they could be broadcast to make sure there was nothing compromising in them. So after the recording was made, it was given to a pilot who flew it back to Guam the Army uh, PRO picked it up at Guam at the airport and took it to the Navy transmitter and fed it back to San Francisco by shortwave, and then NBC put it on the wire. Okay, then we have that tape now and uh, the audio and the visual of this, and I think it would be uh, interesting for the viewers to take a look at that. So let's It's important do it. to note that the first part of it is missing because uh, they didn't know it was coming in advance and couldn't prepare for it, so they started recording after it was underway. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at that now then. This week, the 17th Infantry Regiment scaled the rocky heights of Hill 153 to rest it from its Jap defenders. The words of the Jap general were true. The Okinawa Jap garrison collapsed almost immediately after they were pushed below Hill 153. 153 is the center high point and the final strong Jap defense line anchored on Hills 167, 153, and 115. To give you the story of this final decisive battle of Okinawa, we have brought our Army Hour wire recorder to the command post of the 17th Infantry Regiment. With this is Technical Sergeant Morris O. Schrader of Cabot, Indiana, platoon sergeant, who led the first platoon of American infantry to the top of Hill 153. Well, tell us then uh, where your platoon finally did scale the hill. Another company was pushed up on the extreme left side of the hill. After they had secured their end of the hill, we pushed up behind them and turning right. We went to the extreme right flank, turning left, we moved up on the hill, one squad not receiving any enemy action. The second squad that was sent up received quite a bit of grenade and mortar fire, and they stayed in there and fought right back with the Japs. The third squad moved on up, and the mortar fire continued to uh, come over, and after about 25 minutes, the battle was all over, and the rest of the company could move up on the hill without any whatsoever except a few slight injuries. When you finally reached the top of Hill 153, did you see the rest of the island? We could see the rest of the, the remaining part of the island very good. We could see all the gap movements on that part of the island. Technical Sergeant Morris O. Schrader of Carbon Ohio has given us a word picture of the capture of Hill 153 on Southern Okinawa, the last decisive battle of a campaign of decisive battles. After Hill 153 was in American hands, the Jap position here collapsed completely. This is Sergeant Bob McLeod speaking from a frontline command post of the 17th Infantry Regiment.